Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep his commandments. One more time. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep his commandments. Um, even as we come to the end of the year, I think it's a good practice to take time to reflect on all that we have heard throughout the year, whether it's memory verses or for me personally, it's been um, the notes I've been taking during my quiet time. I've been blessed this past um, week to just take time to read it again, to reflect on all that God has um, spoken to me throughout this year. And like we heard from Brother Bobby um, today, just remembering what the purpose is for all that we hear. And the purpose is to, the purpose is to be encouraged and also to be challenged and to, to hear, to obey God when we're challenged. Cool. So what I wanted to share um, today, or well, what I felt led to share was, um, as many of you know, I grew up, most of my teenage years, I grew up without having parents. Both of my parents had passed away. And even as I became a Christian, um, there were many challenges I struggled with. And for a long time, I used to, an ex excuse I used to come up with, or um, the attitude I used to have was, oh, if only my parents had, if only I had been taught this or I had, I had somebody to teach me this life principles when I was young, um, maybe it would be easier for me to overcome a certain sin I was struggling with or for me to be not be anxious. And there were so many things like that. But more recently, a couple of years back, God rebuked me for such um, an attitude. And um, because I got saved when I was about uh, 17, and so yeah, after many years, God was like, I've been a father to you for this many years. And so it's if I still have an excuse that, oh, hopefully I had a father or something, then it's a dishonor to God. It's saying that God is not a good father or God is not an effective father uh, to me. And that really challenged me to say, I can't claim to have God as a father and still be using um, my experiences during childhood um, as a reason why I'm not more spiritual or why I'm struggling with certain sins. And, um, and so for me, it was a confirmation that God was still able to change me. Um, and God was still able to even fix things that may have been broken. And so I, as I was meditating on it, something else God spoke to me very clearly was from Matthew chapter 18, verse 3 and 4. I'll start from verse 2, Matthew 18, verse 2, it says, and Jesus called a child to himself and set him before them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And even if we look at, um, we know this in Romans where it talks about the fact that we have been given a spirit of adoption so that we can cry out, Abba, Father. For me, I saw that there are two aspects to that. There's one which is knowing God as a father or seeing the fatherhood of God, but then there's also a part I have to play, and that is humbling myself as a little child. It's when those two come together, that's when I can really, um, God can really do a work in me and to transform me into who he wants me to be. And even in the world, we all recognize this. A lot of you are parents here. And you know the importance of um, 
the childhood here years you know it's a lot easier to teach your children whether it's practical things like you want them to learn a second language or a mu uh, musical instrument it's better to do it when they are young than when they get older and also i've heard stories of how easy it is for children to pick up habits they see in their parents and so in the same way when i humble myself before god and i have this attitude of a child before god then it becomes a lot easier for god to teach me things from him to help me to put away bad habits i may have um, been accustomed to for so so many years and to it's easy for him to break me for me to respond when the lord rebukes me and some of the practical ways in which at least for me i've sought to humble myself is being quick to acknowledge my mistakes uh, whether it's something i did just a few seconds ago or something i may have spent many years doing and thinking it was right um, to humble myself and say lord i am happy to accept i'm eager to accept wrong because i know that is how i get to grow um, and i get to become matured and um also being willing to, willing to make mistakes so caring less about the opinions of people we being willing to obey god whatever i feel he's telling me to do even if it may be humbling or it there's some risk to it saying lord i i want to be like a little child who is not ashamed to fall down many times and um keep getting back up until they learn to walk um finally in joel chapter 2 verse 25 again this is another promise that um god gave to me probably one of the time when i was most discouraged um and it's in verse 25 so joel 2 verse 25 and um, the lord says then i will make up to you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten and the creeping locusts the stripping locusts and the gnawing locusts my great army which i have which i sent among you you will have plenty to eat and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god who has dealt wondrously with you then my people will never be put to shame and this is for me this was god telling me he would make up for all the years um in the past um and how is he going to do this in verse 28 is where he gives the promise of the holy spirit and again the holy spirit who shows us shows god um, as a father to us and helps us to cry out abba father it's it's much easier for children to cry out dad um, in times of struggle than it is for fully grown adults um, so yeah i just wanted to share that and i mean for me it was my parents passing away when i was young but i know for many of us we may have grown up in circumstances that was not ideal and made many mistakes and many people only coming to the lord after uh, many years of of living in the world but the encouragement i wanted to share with everyone here is that um i believe god is also saying to you if only you would humble yourself and become like little children then it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter if you came to christ when you were 30 or 40 or 50 god is still able to do a great work in in each and every one of us and to to make us become like christ um, in practical ways that we may find very difficult to to do otherwise um, so i pray um, this will be true i pray that um, god will do a work in each and every one of us and we bring forth christ in a way that um, that is a witness to the world and that while people in the world do not have hope people who have many people go through crazy things that stories i hear but that we can that we'll be able to show the world 
that in Christ, um, truly we, we have become new creatures and that there is nothing too difficult for God to do. Amen. Uh, I heard a sermon this week. Uh, it was very timely in how it reminded me um, that my desire to follow God is actually not my own desire, but God's regeneration and changing of my desires. My desires prior to my decision to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior were nothing more than selfish desires. I assume most people are similar to me in this. I have met some who seem selfless without Christ um, in their lives. Um, I don't know their motives or reasoning, um, but uh, this was certainly not me. Um, even now I find too much of Daniel's desires trying to integrate themselves um, disguised as God's desires. I often have to ask the Lord to expose my seemingly good intentions to see if they're self-seeking motives or obedience uh, to Him. I can easily be tricked into thinking I'm obeying Him when I'm really just doing what I think is good. A good example of this is many years ago, um, I gave money to what seemed to be a needy couple. I assumed giving any money away um, was always a good thing. Uh, but then the following week, they again implied their need, um, and I offered to help them again. I had good intentions with the hope that any kindness to them would make God pleased. But looking back, I see what would have pleased God is having asked him what he wanted me to do with the money that he had given me. Maybe a coworker who wasn't as vocal of their needs could have used it more. Um, God wants us to be guided by him with not only avoiding evil, but also when we want to do good. What encourages me is that while I fall short of perfect obedience to our Lord, every day I wake up desiring to obey him is confirmation that he is still working on me. I know this because Philippians 2.13 tells us it is God who is at work in me, both to will to work for, and to work for his good pleasure. That my life apart from Christ means nothing for God's glory. But if I'm obedient to God, I can work for his good pleasure. Human nature is repelled by the law of God. Romans 8.7 says that the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God, and those in the flesh cannot please God. A simple test to verify this is to try to obey a commandment of God when our flesh pulls us in the other direction. That struggle of justifying and validating my feelings or actions is evidence that this statement is true. But what I and myself cannot do, God can. He reconciles us and changes us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away, behold, the new things have come. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And what is the evidence of being a new creature in Christ? One of them is he makes my strengths my weaknesses and my weaknesses my strengths. Um, an example of this is um, I used to have pride and confidence um, in worldly things. Now I seek for humility and gentleness. I used to want to win in everything. Now wins are less important than having a good attitude. My mind used to be absorbed with gathering money and stuff. And while I'm not free, it's becoming less and less. I used to use my tongue to build up my own glory. Now I want to use it to build up others. To more and more use it to point to Christ and his goodness. I used to trust my intuition and my logic. I'm increasingly seeing my weaknesses in my flesh and want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so I can be guided by Him. I share this because as far away as I am from perfection, I know He's still working on me. He is well aware of my failures and my weaknesses, but still loves me and continues to change my heart. It is He who does this work in us, and it is He who's, who is committed to making us more like Jesus Christ. He already sees me just as He saw Jesus, because I'm justified by my faith in Him alone. I'm so grateful for this truth because it leads me to a deeper desire to know my Father. Psalms 119, 35 and 38 says, Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonest gain. Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. Establish your word to your servant as that which produces reverence for you. The Lord will help me and all of us as we seek his desires earnestly. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what I'm going to speak to you on today or share with you is 
on becoming a loaf of bread. So it's kind of a funny thing to think about, but I want you to stick with me on it, okay? So uh, this week we went on a long drive with the family and we, uh, we were listening to a story and on book and the story kind of got to a point where I realized there was a parallel with like church history. And so we had a really interesting conversation with Caleb who was still awake listening. And we're talking about how church history led to some point in time having people who were, the people who were, uh, you know, able to read and write that they were holding information about God from the people who couldn't and manipulated the word of God. And he said, you know, that reminds me of a sandwich and like a piece of bread and then a lot of uh, layers in between. And um, he said, I think the people can be kind of like the layers in between the bread and keeping us from God. And if those layers were removed, then we would be one piece of bread with God. And I thought, wow, this is a really interesting thought. Like I want to, I want to um, meditate on that more. I thought that was a beautiful illustration that God gave me to think about. And I started to consider, so like the layers of the um, sandwich would be sin. So if you could see that picture, all that goodness, it could be very alluring, but it can be sin. And um, much like what I shared recently about encouragement as well, I mentioned before that our desire is to love one another, build one up another, and uh, as we do for the body of Christ. And what gets in the way of that are the layers. So we have lots of things that will separate us from that fellowship. And the scripture, James 1.13 says, that no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has con been conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, it brings for, uh, forth death. Um, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. And, you know, these layers largely have to do with our response to our temptations, right? Um, how do we respond to that? And what is our attitude towards that? And Jesus came ultimately to remove these layers so that we can be united with him. So next is the bread, which is the word of life. And um, James 1.17 talks about that. It says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. And as you go on into that, verse 21 says, therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness and humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. And I thought about it and we can remove layers, just like verse 21 says, in humility by receiving the word of God. So the first question comes to mind is like, well, how do I receive God, God's word? And I dove deeper into that. Now, the thing that I think we've talked about even today, I've heard it shared a little bit, is it doesn't mean that it's easy, right? So becoming bread will break you. You'll be broken. In John, in John 8, uh, 6, 33, Jesus said, For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. And, you know, Jesus challenges our perspective on what it means to come to him. So I think these people were coming to him, and it says in Scripture they were wanting their bellies to be full, and they were happy to be filled by the bread that Jesus was providing. And as soon as he provides this solution like he has eternal life you know eternal bread and water that they can have while they never thirst they said well give that to me i would love more of that like how can we get that and then he points out that they don't really understand he's already there jesus is there and yet they don't believe still and you know i think those people that wanted the bread they wanted to be comfortable and be full and i think i relate to that in the sense of sometimes when i follow jesus i want to kind of keep a distance. I don't want to quite be challenged to the degree that he's going to challenge me. And I just want to say, you know, I'll take the bread, I'll be comfortable, and that's good. But he was actually helping them to remove all the layers, the sin, um, with these words that he was sharing. And he wants a deeper connection. He wants them, or he wants us to follow him wherever he leads. And so lastly, uh, you know, it's not complicated, but it costs us everything. 
And there was a quote that um, Jordan Peterson shared that I thought was really relevant to this. He said, I don't ask God for favors or for wishes, but I do think that if you sit on the edge of your bed and things aren't going very well for you and you ask what foolish thing you are doing to make it worse, then you'll get an answer right now. And it won't be the one you want, but it might be the one that if you listen to it would set things straight. And I like that quote because it drives home the point um, of what it takes to become like the loaf of bread, right? Part of the body of Christ. I believe we all need to be willing to ask God where we need to change um, and be ready to listen and respond to the answer uh, we get. And for me, like when we closed the daycare down and we started to move on to the next step, I thought, well, I'm gonna have lots of free time. This will help with my time management. But God said, no, you still need to work on your time management. I'm not going to give you more time. You need to figure out how to manage that. And he held my feet to the fire in that. So, I, you know, I have to figure out maybe I need to stay up later some nights. Maybe I need to be more disciplined in what I'm doing throughout the day. And he still has challenged me with that. But it, it was the answer to prayer I thought was going to be, oh, we'll take away this part that's taking up most of the time of your day and give you more free time. And that's not the case. Um, that was not the answer I was hoping for, but it was the one I needed. Um, and so he, Jesus, or God's not looking to just make us full or comfortable. But when we remove all the layers, we see that there's uh, so much more God is excited to share with us as we grow in relationship with him and one another. And I do believe if we do this, like each of us take that on individually in our heart, like, God, what can I change? What do I need to change? We can start to form that loaf of bread and be part of the body of Christ and encouraging each other. So praise God for that. Greetings, brothers and sisters and all the children. Today, I want to share something special with all of you. But it will require your imaginations. Children, are you ready? I want to share with you a riddle. I always tell the truth. I show off everything that I see. I come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes I'm on a wall. Sometimes I'm on a shelf. What am I? Now just so you, there's no doubt. The hint is, if you raise your right hand, I raise my left hand. If you raise your left hand, I raise my right hand. Do you know what the answer is? It is a mirror. If you got that right, you're amazing. I want to ask you, do you ever make funny faces in the mirror? That's a lot of fun, right? But sometimes you feel like not even smiling. Well, I would like to encourage you all that next time if you feel like this, tell yourself, hello, beautiful, you're made in the image of God. Let us remember this. And we all know that a mirror can be very useful. And I won't go into the first two um, things because you all know what, what you can put on and put off. But uh, the third item is a medical device. A mirror can be placed under a child's nose. And when the child breathes, you will see the fog on the mirror. And you can tell if the child is breathing healthy. And in Christian life, we have another mirror. That is the Bible. And I want to continue on reading uh, what Brother Kavanch read. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. 
but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. And the Bible speaks about put on a new self. That, and these are some of the qualities that we can have when we put on the new self. So, uh, one is thankfulness, and that's going to make us a good cheer. Honesty, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and f full armor of God. And Brother Winhai, five months ago, shared an amazing message on this with seven different props from the nccf museum i recommend we all go listen to it again but uh, above all we need to put on love and here are some things we can put off that is the old self that's complaining and when we complain it's guaranteed that's going to give us a sad face we need to put off anger, wrath, malice, slander, bad mouthing, and deceitful lusts. Now, this Bible is a spiritual device, and it's a very powerful device. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two swords, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And um, I want to see um, a person has two nostrils, and they remind me of my inner life and my outer life. And I can go to the word of God to see if there's any blockage in my spiritual life. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it says, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. And the reflection will be not of us, but of Christ. And I'm reminded of a song by Keith Green. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. O oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first, help me to just to live it, Lord. And then, when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown, for my reward is giving glory to you. May we all say amen to that.